All right, in section 5.1, we're looking at graphing quadratic functions. And there's two different forms that we're going to talk about our equations being in. First off, a quadratic function always has an x squared. And that's important. Okay, if we just have an x and not an x squared, it's not quadratic. Um, or if we had something bigger like x cubed, that's not quadratic. Because the biggest exponent that we have is a 2, that's a quadratic function, and we know that its uh, graph looks like a parabola. So those are the only types of problems that we're going to see in this, in this chapter really, but especially in this section. So the thing is, is that if we have a parabola, either we have a parabola that opens up, so that it looks like a U, or we could have a parabola that opens down so that it looks like an N. And in either case, the most important point on our graph is either the smallest value down here or the highest value. Okay, And in either case, we call this the vertex. And it's basically the point where our graph switches what it's doing. It was coming down at the vertex, it starts coming back up or in this case it was going up and then at the vertex starts going back down. So if we are in standard form here, okay, and standard form is going to be the one without parentheses, okay, that's how we recognize it, without parentheses, then we are going to find our vertex using this formula, negative b over 2a. Okay, let's go ahead and look at an example. So for example one, our function is negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. There's no parentheses here, so this is in standard form, which means that I can go through and write what a, b, and c are. a is the number in front of x squared, and in this case we don't have a number there, but we have a negative, so that means we have negative 1 for a. b is the number in front of x, which is 2. C is the number without a letter next to it, so it's 3. Our vertex formula is negative b over 2a, which I'm going to fill in right here. So negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. I'm going to simplify this, which you can do either by hand or you can plug into the calculator. If you do plug it into the calculator, it would be beneficial to put parentheses down on the bottom. But either way, we get negative 2 over negative 2, which is positive 1. So the x-coordinate for our vertex is 1. We're going to put that in the middle of our table of values. That's because we know that this is the turning point of our graph. So it's going to be the middle value that we want to graph. Now we're going to pick values that are close to 1. So 0 is close to 1. 2 is close to 1, and we're going to pick 2 more on either side, so negative 1 and 3, for a total of 5 points here. Now, to get our y values, we do like we do with any other table values we have. We take these x values and put plug them in to our original function. So that's what this right here is for. So if I plug in negative 1, where x is, then in my calculator I'm going to type in negative, open parentheses, negative 1, close parentheses squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. If I do that, I get 0. Okay, because this ends up being a negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. When I plug 0 in, depending on what kind of calculator you're using, you should be able to either scroll up or press second enter and it will give you back what you just put in so that all you have to do is change the negative ones to zeros now. If I work this out I get 3. I'm going to keep going and plug in 1. So this gives me 4. Now as long as I've done this right this value 3 that's next to my vertex should be on the other side as well. This number 0 
should be here as well because what's happening is it's like we've got a mirror that we're holding here and so the things that are closest to the mirror okay should be the same and the things farther away from the mirror should also be the same so let's graph this on our graph negative one zero zero three one four two three and three zero and hopefully you can see the the parabola shape we've got going here if we connect and you make it kind of curvy let me try that again connect and make it curvy okay like so it does keep going down each direction and you would put arrows on the end there okay but this is a parabola that opens down and we could actually have predicted that if we have a negative in front of our x squared it will always be a parabola that opens down if it's a positive number in front it would be a parabola opening up so on your notes it asks you what is the vertex which remember that's our point that was in the middle 1 comma 4 and it asks you for AOS which AOS stands for axis of symmetry and what we mean by axis of symmetry is that there's got to be a line that we can draw okay where our mirror is where where our symmetry is um, is at like if I look at either half of this now it's the same on either side so where that happens if you look is right here where X is 1 and so the that line is a vertical line going through 1 and it will always be X equals whatever the number is and in fact it will always be the same number that our X value is in our vertex example 2 okay so a is the number in front of x squared if there's not a number there it's 1 B is the number in front of X C is the number without a letter next to it we need to find the vertex using our formula negative B over 2 a so that gives me negative negative 4 because that B is negative 4 over 2 times 1 so anytime you say negative negative that turns into a positive if they're right next to each other like that they turn positive on the bottom two times one is two and you divide and get two so that is the x value of our vertex and from what I just said on the last problem that means that our axis of symmetry we know has to be at x equals two now we're going to put that in the middle of our table of values and pick numbers that are close to 2. So 1 and 0, 3 and 4. And then we take these and plug them each into our function up here. So you can start from either direction like 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 1 and type it into your calculator, do it in your head, whatever, you should get 1 then plug in 1 where your X's are and you get negative 2 and then plug in 2 and you get negative 3 and then as long as we did the top two right these just repeat and we're ready to graph So 0, 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 2, and 4, comma 1. Now, since this number in front of x squared was positive, we could have predicted that this would be a parabola opening up. It, so it does look like a U. Okay. And uh, to lastly fill in the y coordinate of our vertex was negative 3.
So there we have it. Now, that's if it's in standard form, if there's no parentheses. If we have a problem where we're in a different kind of form called vertex form, we know that it's vertex form because we'll see some parentheses okay, with our x inside. So just like with our other one, the very beginning of this, if it's positive, it means it's a parabola opening up. If it's negative, it would mean it's a parabola opening down. But the difference is how we find our vertex because we don't have an A, a B, and a C. What we do is we take the number from the inside of the parentheses and we change the sign. Okay, so in this case, our number was negative H. We change it to positive H. Then we take the number that's outside, K, and that's our Y value. So the cool thing about vertex form is the vertex is right there. You just have to be able to realize that it's there. So on example three, we are going to find the vertex. So our X value is the opposite of what's inside. So that's negative one. And it's actually what's outside. So negative three. So that is our vertex, negative one comma negative three. Now we are ready to put that in our table of values in the middle, just like before. The rest of this process is actually identical to what we've been doing. We put that in the middle, um, pick numbers close, and then plug in. And so got to be careful plugging in. You might mess this up if you're not paying attention. We do two and we open parentheses. Then we put in our value for x, so 1 plus 1, close your parentheses, make sure you put squared on the outside, minus 3. So this gives us 5. And then we'll do the same thing with 0. So 1 times 2 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. And then as long as we did the first two right, these will just repeat. So 1 comma 5, 0 comma negative 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, 5. You may or may not notice that this parabola is uh, skinnier or narrower than the two parabolas we drew before this. And that has to do with this 2 in front is stretching our graph. Um, just a little extra tidbit there for you. Our axis of symmetry, remember, is talking about where is that line that splits my graph in half, which it is right here at x equals negative 1. So that's our axis of symmetry. Our vertex was negative 1, negative 3. So we're done with that problem. Last example of graphing now. Our vertex is the opposite of the number inside our parentheses, which is positive 2. It's actually what's outside, which is 4. And then we're ready to keep going. That's our vertex, 2 comma 4. So we put that in the middle of our table of values. And we pick numbers close. And we plug these values in. Again, being careful when you plug in to make sure you type it in right. We put negative, open parentheses, 0 minus 2, close your parentheses, squared, plus 4. So that gives us uh, 0. And then you type in 1 instead of 0. And that gives you 3. And if you've done those right, then these should just repeat. And so this is a parabola opening down. And that's how you graph quadratic equations.